Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. According to George S. Patton, American general, commander of the U.S. 7th and 3rd Armies in World War II, never tell people how to do things. Tell them what to do, and they will surprise you with their ingenuity. Very true. Morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot to call in with our Pledge of Allegiance. Let's get started off right this Monday. Good morning. And a good, good morning to you and yours. Zeb Bell right here in the saddle at Zeb at the Ranch and brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations celebrating with you a great big spring tire sale. Stop in and see them today. Along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, I'll be down there this afternoon at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you and and, of course, Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow. I mean, I'm impressed. It's not three minutes to the hour, and i got to run to the news. Randy, good morning. Hi. It would be good if all of our kids said that every morning, huh? Amen to that. Randy, i got to run, but you hit the nail right on the head. Thanks, buddy. I uh, appreciate Randy calling in with our Pledge of Allegiance. It's been a long time since he's done that. And right now, let's go to the weather forecast brought to you by KNR Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Hello, Roger and the crew. Man, they are geared up and ready for a lot of spring run on the best tools and equipment. They got it all right there at KNR Rental for both long and short term rental. Not sure what you need? Well, all you have to do is just ask. Give them a call, 678 one two two K and R rental. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to feel a little bit more like winter today. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Slight chance of rain and or snow showers off and on throughout the day. Plus, it is going to be windy. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy skies. We are expecting a high of 51. Tonight, that's going to continue, but tapering off after midnight. Mostly cloudy skies. Low of 31. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Winds are going to be calming down. High of 53. Overnight, low of 28. By Wednesday, sunny and 58. That's going to be our warmest day of the week. Thursday, sunny, 54. And then by Friday, sunny, 57. Let's look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. Great job, Gina. Thank you very much. And don't you forget about K&R Rental. They won't forget about you. Let me tell you, they've got all the information available on the tools and equipment that they can offer to you to finish any kind of a project. So please get a hold of them today. And they're located at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, K&R Rental on the Burley Paul Highway, 678-3122. Uh, I want to remind you, too, about our friends over at Daryl's Cleaners, and i got to stop in there today. My goodness sakes, I put it off and put it off, and I haven't had a chance to stop in and see Kevin and Cindy. Well, they can take and clean your clothes and make them look brand spanking new. And many kind times I've uh, got the clothes out of the cleaners and said, I don't remember buying that shirt. Boy, it looks nice. Well, I'll tell you what, they do that with all your clothes. Stop in and see them today at Daryl's Cleaners 12. 
1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. They are waiting right now to serve you. Uh, A couple of notes I want to get in. First of all, I want to say congratulations to all the teams in this area that competed at the state basketball tournament. And, uh, of course, I'm a little bit prejudiced, and I think I have a right to be, that uh, my two grandsons, Dawson and Jackson, playing for Kimberly, and uh, they ended up second. Ended up second, and uh, the last game for the championship, Sugar Salem, defeated Kimberly. But I just want to tell my grandsons, if they're listening this morning, that uh, we're very proud of what you did. The whole team, excellent young men, and uh, congratulations for a great season. I think they ended up like, what, 21-2? and two? Really impressive. Don't forget our friends, too, at Ramsey Heating and Electric. And uh, they're located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Now, the number to call and talk to them about anything you need as far as heating, cooling, and electrical needs, 678-0459. Otherwise, stop in, see them. They're open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. And it's it's not bragging, it's a fact. They do have everything you need for your electrical needs right there at Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they always provide warm winters and cool summers. Located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, Ramsey Heating and Electric. And Denny's Restaurant. Hello, Denny's. Oh, we had a good lunch bunch over there. I'm telling you what, the food is great. I mean, they've got a lot of great additions to that menu, and they're always uh, increasing and adding. And they've got the best of people to serve you, so stop in today at America. Diner, Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley, and they've got another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Thomas and the crew say, come on in for great eating and great service at Denny's Restaurant in Burley, America's Diner. Um, I don't know how you feel about this subject. You can call and let me know, but... I absolutely hate daylight saving time. I do not see, and please call me and let me know how far off base I am on this, but I don't see any energy saving by having uh, daylight saving time. What is there a saving in having to put your lights on earlier and longer in the morning? And the danger factor of having kids wait for a school bus in almost semi-darkness as opposed to the light before the daylight saving time, I would be one of the first people to sign a petition or do anything to get rid of daylight saving time. What are your thoughts on this? I don't like it. Uh, I go to bed very early in the evening because I have to get up at quarter to four in the morning and to sit there and uh, the sunlight coming through the drapes and everything. I don't like daylight saving time. I don't like it at all. I'd like to see it repealed. Call me. Let me know your thoughts. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You, you said it as I turn the radio down before I dial. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that, this thing's all wrong. They need to stick with the standard times. You have the kids are pushed to get out the door, out into the dark, the drivers out on the road are at risk of getting messed up, getting into the kids or the buses or running into something else while they're pressured. Pressured. They need they need that extra light in the morning to kind of get themselves going and up the steam. And it's wrong. It just needs to be left alone, Zeb. I just don't, I don't see the energy savings. I had somebody call me the other day and say, oh, look at all the energy that's saved by having daylight saving time. Now, Earl, if you have to turn your lights on longer and leave them on longer in the morning as compared to the evening hours, what in the world is the difference? Isn't it a catch-22 wash? It's a waste of electricity, but the, the thing that's most important is those kids in the morning yes. and the buses. 
Yes. And and then drivers on the road and the risk they're taking and the pressure that people are under under that change them. Well, I'm one of the advocates of not having it, and I don't believe Arizona has it either. And uh, I just I don't see the merit in it. I see more detriment than I do any positive. And I'm glad you called. I appreciate it, Earl. God bless you up on the mountain this morning. Thanks. Zeb, it, Zeb, it snuck up on me uh, Sunday morning because I didn't know it was coming then. Oh. <laughs> and, and some of the words I used uh, Sunday morning... Uh, would not be allowed in church. <laughs> well, you were late for church anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what, once I get out the door, I'm in church. All right. Hey, God bless you, Earl. Thanks much for your call. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you and all. All right, sir. Hey, caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody about the Great Big Spring Community Sale managed by Roggy Auctions. Oh, this is going to be a ripping good community sale on March 21st at 10 a.m. at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. Don't miss it. Starting to take consignments right now. Farm equipment, livestock, guns, you name it, it's all there. Look at RoggyAuction.com website, and don't forget, they're taking your items now for that Great Big Community Sale sale, the spring community sale over at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds on March 21st, managed by Roggy Auction Company. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Well, initially, daylight savings time was the fourth Sunday in April. Yeah. Okay, and so they weren't satisfied with that. And, of course, by that time, you know, the sun's up. You know, we don't have the danger for the kids standing out there. I know parents that have to sit there with their kids until the bus comes that are out in the rural areas. Yep. You know, and some of them have just got to the point they drive their kids to school. Yep. So, you know, because of the safety factor. But then it went to the first Sunday of April, and, and then they, so we've moved it up seven full weeks from what it initially was. And then if, if you remember, um, one year we had daylight savings time the full year when we supposedly had this real super energy crisis. Mm-hmm. And that was a joke because the coldest temperatures of the day are when? When the sun is coming up. Right. And so whoever come up with that brilliant scheme was actually wasting more money. In fact, they did studies on it and showed that that was a, a total fiasco uh, wasn't it, we, we the country used more energy when we went to daylight savings time around the year and I, I, I'm totally against the two Zeb it, it's just biologically it's a tough deal for the body to make that adjustment and, uh, and I, I, it's like you know cutting off one end of your rope and uh, tied on the other end. Yeah, <laughs> got the kids out there. That's a good analogy. It's not a safety thing. People are going to work in the dark yep. instead of in the light, and so it it creates more ha- hazard for a lot of people. Absolutely, and, especially when the weather. Is Absolutely. I loved your analogy of cutting off the rope on one end and tying it on the other. Adrian, appreciate your call. I got another one waiting in a commercial, but I really like that. I'm going to use that. Thank you. I'm going to steal it from you. I appreciate that. Well, you're a big rodeo guy, and I, and I still heard this rumor that you were going to try out for Brahma Bull riding. And I thought, no. I don't want to see that one. You had one word wrong, Brahma Bull, uh, the bull throwing instead of riding, because I'm not going to get on anything. God bless you, man. Thanks well, much. I tell you, it's a dangerous business. It is. I, I've got a friend that has a plate in his head. Uh, yeah, a, a plate in his head because he got stepped on by one of those bulls. Well. And he's, he's lucky to be alive. Well, he, he stays on. The year before, I hit in the, in the temple. And has a plate in his head from a, a fastball and a baseball oh. game. So two brothers. They're both still alive. They, this happened a long, long time ago. So thanks for medical science. Anyway, Amen. You have a good day. Thank you. And those two brothers' names are nicknamed Lucky and Luckier. Anyhow, uh, I want to remind you quickly about our friends at Dino Septic Service. Boy, I mean, they do a job that you and I don't want to do. You don't want to be standing out there, leaning on the fence, pumping out a septic. Oh, no. 
No. They do it, and they do the job so well. Septic tank pumping and backhoe services, sewer and sink drain line cleaning, liquid waste removal. I mean, these folks are so good, and they've enhanced and enlarged their business to better serve more customers. Give them a call. 436-6526 or 678-1638. I mean, fast, fair, friendly service. Dino Septic Service, you get a hold of them today. Like I say every day on the program, it's really the truth. That big truck that pulls in your yard smells cargo on the way to serve you. Dino's Septic Service. Uh, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436 2244 927 4587 I don't know what you can say. I don't know what to say in regards to the coronavirus, and you're worried or scared or whatever your thoughts are. I don't know. Um, I had a long talk with Deanne about this over the weekend as we went up to the basketball tournament, and you're sitting in there with uh, probably, what, seven or 8,000 people surrounding you, and I never once thought about the fear of the coronavirus while I was there. I'm not, I guess I'm just not prone to really getting excited, and maybe I'm wrong, or worried about, first of all, something that I have no control over. And second of all, it's it seems like it is far, far less worrisome and deadly than the flu. And very unfortunately, and I'm going to underline those two words so that nobody can ever come back on me on this. Very unfortunately, it seems like... It is going after the elderly and with already having symptomatic conditions of something else. Now, all that being said, uh, there are, what, uh, 500 cases now in the United States and approximately 20 people have died. And this is where I'm not getting that concerned over it myself, is that the flu takes literally thousands and thousands of people, even with the flu vaccines that are readily available to all. So, I don't know. Are you uh, going to live your life in fear and uh, uh, stay in the basement until basically you hear or read of a, a subsizing of this event and it's gone away or been diminished, or are you going to go out and live your life? I'm going to go live my life. I'm not going to uh, sit back and just, oh, my, I just don't know if I should go to the grocery store. I can't live that way. What are your thoughts? 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'm not trying to minimize it at all. Not at all. Because regardless of who gets it and how and the severity of it and or the potential of it being a life taker, that should never be diminished. But the flu and other Uh, contagious diseases probably are far more worrisome. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Bell. You know what? I I feel my my sympathies and my heart breaks for the people who've lost their lives uh, with this coronavirus, but it also bleeds for the ones that have died just from the flu. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to stop doing what I do because somebody sent uh, pushed the panic button. And boy, right now, what you just said right there is something I'm really concerned about. And that's that five-letter word, panic. I think that is absolutely, we're on the verge of panic. We're seeing it with the stock market. We're seeing it with the media. And I think they, the media, are as guilty as anyone, or more so, about fear-mongering. What are your thoughts? Oh, I'm totally on board with you. You betcha. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it before. You know, my theory is that it was put out right now for a reason. Um, it was leaked. Um, the economy, don't really think it's hurt the economy that much. Um, stock market, eh, it varies all the time anyway. 
So why panic? Well, but we just heard a news report at 8 o'clock that the market dropped substantially again this morning in fears of the coronavirus and its increased assault on humanity. But you know what? I, I would put this forth to you, Donna, and tell me if you think I'm really wrong. I would say that if everybody would just live their lives and use common sense, uh, but live their lives every day and not be uh, delegated to, oh my goodness, i got to go live in the basement because the media said so, I think we'd all be a lot better off. Oh, no, I think you're totally right. Like I said, I, I get out in the public every day. I come in t- contact with, you know, uh, hundreds of people every day. Mm-hmm. Do I worry about it? No. I just wash my hands all the time, and I make sure that, you know, I, I try not to be around sick people, but how do you know if they're going to be sick? Yeah, there's you know, the they key. Carry, they, carry, they carry around yes. the viruses, you know, for you know, 10 to 14 days. Everybody does. So, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. Are we going to see, and I know a lot of people might criticize me for this, but are we going to see a demise of our society and our civilization to where we all of a sudden say, oh, I'm panicking and I'm going to the hills, I'm going to dig a hole in the side of a wall and live in a cave. And that's the message that seems to be out there from the media. Fear, fear, fear. It's getting worse. Oh, we're all going to die. Okay, stop. And let's be really realistic. In this country, how many people have died right now associated with the coronavirus? 20. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Um, and I got news for those people that want to build bunkers and, you know, uh, go up to the hills and dig a hole in the side of a mountain. They're going to get it there, too. So why not just stay home and enjoy life? I don't know. I'm going to take heat over this because uh, people will say, well, you're minimizing it. Well, I don't want to maximize it either because I think that's what the media has done. And then some of these lowballs that have uh, absolutely come out and criticized Trump for not showing signs of panic and concern. Actually, I think he's addressed this situation as professional as anybody could. Well, I'm like I said, I'm right there with you. I, I, I think he's done an excellent job in you know getting the best uh, scientists, the best doctors on board with this to try to find a a vaccine for it. What more can he do? Yeah, and this coronavirus... Uh, this coronavirus, Donna, a lot of people, and I've read this, it's been in various uh, newspapers, Wall Street Journal, etc. You just touched on something a few minutes ago that is uh, very uh, merit-worthy in discussing. A lot of people have the so-called virus, don't know it, don't feel sick, and in a couple of days, they're over it. It's like the common cold. Yeah. Only, only on steroids. Yeah. There you go. Donna, always appreciate your common sense. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. All right. You bet. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. I've got to give away some cookies in just a minute. So here's what we'll do. We'll have you get on the air first, and then I'll give away the cookies. So give me about a minute and a half's worth. Good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good morning, sir. I'll try to cut it short. Yeah, the Democrats will not let a crisis go to waste. And the mainstream media will not let a crisis go to waste. How do you think they're going to get President Trump out of office by tanking the economy is their best shot? So if they fan the flames and pour gasoline on this fire, it's going to get a lot of people thinking. And that's they think that's their only shot. They've tried impeachment. They've tried Mueller. They've tried everything to get him out of office, and it hasn't succeeded. I have no basis on which to give you this as a statement, but I'm just going to say it, and then you can pick up the ball and run with it. Doesn't it seem rather odd that all of a sudden this coronavirus scare started right after all the other attempts failed? Bingo. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put it past a politician, and I'm throwing some Republicans in there too, to do something like this 
so they can get their good old boys club back so they can use all of their foreign money to enrich their families and themselves. There's just a lot of gray areas that I have questions on, and I'm not going to speculate, but, you know, everybody has a right to think about various and sundry items. Uh, but this, this is just all happening uh, too coincidentally, my friend. Exactly. That's exactly it. Too coincidental. I, I agree with you 100% there. All right, Doug. God bless you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody, let's do what we can for our seniors. Go eat. You'll leave with a full stomach and a full heart. I like that. Full stomach and a full heart. Absolutely. Thank you for supporting the senior centers. Thank you, Doug. You uh, Going to give away some cookies right now to Sophie's Chatterbox at 530 East Street in Rupert. Oh, what a bakery. Oh, what a great restaurant. You're going to love the food and the people are so nice. You're going to love it over there. I mean, they make the best of cookies and pies and desserts and cakes and everything. Wow. And if you're the winner, all you got to do is call them and let them know when you're going to be over there to pick up your cookies. And here's the question. This is relatively a really easy question for this morning. This actor played the cop in the movie It's a Wonderful Life. He appeared in John Wayne movies like Hondo and later had a Western TV series. Who was that actor? First person to call with the right answer, you'll win a dozen cookies to Sophie's Chatterbox. Absolutely delicious right on the square in Rupert. Once again, oh, I think they've already got the answer. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hey, Zeb, this is Jack Alexander. The answer is Ward Bond. Well, Jack Alexander, what kind of cookies do you like? I like those great big a uh, six-inch diameter with <laughs> chocolate chips ladled all over with with uh, fresh pecans poured all over the top. Holy smokes! Listen, Mr. Alexander, if you get those, uh, you remember where you want them, okay? Call me. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Hey, God bless you. Thank you much. Uh, Jack Alexander is spot on, and the answer was Ward Bond. Ward Bond appeared in a lot of movies, and uh, he was primarily, uh, you know, uh, known for his Western acting. He was on the TV series Wagon Train. Train and and then of course in the movies with John Wayne, one of which I remember very well, Hondo, and uh, then he played the cop in A Wonderful Life, Ward Bond, a very very distinguished actor, and he did a great job. Calls are welcome four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. Let's kind of recap what the Democrats and their party politics are doing and where they're at. Now, they are down, (laughs) and literally down, to two candidates for tomorrow's Democratic primaries that include our state of Idaho for the Democratic primary tomorrow. Biden leads right now in the delegate votes, etc., and Bernie Sanders is all upset and and mad, and uh, he's kind of speaking out and saying that he sees a repeat of what happened to him by the Democratic Party in 2016. He feels pushed out. Well, to Bernie, first and foremost, Bernie, you shouldn't feel pushed out because you were never pushed in. You were never really a Democrat. You are a communist. And to have the following that you have is scary, to say the least, as to what in the world is America thinking to follow you and your communist socialist ways it's absolutely republic a uh, repugnant <laughs> play on words there repugnant and absolutely worries me bernie sanders feels like he's pushed out well that's good now then you have joe biden standby caller and joe biden is absolutely not worthy not worthy of becoming the presidency not because of his politics but because of where he is right now, mentally, 
and physically. Over the weekend, I had a chance to talk to a gentleman that lives back in D.C. and uh, knows Joe Biden very well. And uh, we had quite a conversation, and he said Joe Biden is not nearly, nearly as close to what he was even a year ago, mentally. And the country should not even entertain thoughts of putting him in as President of the United States. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Tim, sorry to call back, but I just couldn't. You know, we just look at Sanders. Okay, he's got this following. Why are all these people, I mean, he's openly come out as a communist and supporting Fidel Castro, who murders and and stole property and did all this thing, all these bad things, and he still defends him. Just double down on him. I mean, Sanders is a hardcore communist. That's put it bluntly. But why are all these people wanting socialism? I mean, these young people, and and it's because of our education system, Zeb. Yeah, there is some good news on the highlight uh, on the horizon, at least for Idaho. They're working to do away with Common Core. And of course, a lot of us have been trying to do that for a long time. Never years. It's ten years of a failure coming from the United Nations, but it is scary to think that how many people are supporting Bernie Sanders. Well, let me jump in, Adrian. Revolutionary communist. Adrian, let me jump in and tell you something that maybe you didn't know, and I want to share this with you. Just in the last couple of days, Bernie Sanders' campaign hired a guy by the name of Philip Agnew as a new campaign advisor. And it's Philip Agnew that has advocated the abolishment of prisons and the abolishment of police, the end of capitalism, and absolutely supports an open border system. Y'all come on in. So there you go. There's Bernie Sanders hiring a avowed person of Philip Agnew's status that wants to see America turned upside down and turned into a communist-slash-socialist country. And I've got the proof right here in my hand. What more do people want? Yeah, I, I mean, it's just true. You just hear his campaign just a little bit on the, so the morning news on TV, and, and there he is out campaigning. He says, we've got to change this country. I mean, he wants total reformation, you know, or out of this country. And it's just, it's just sickening to think that the number of people that are falling for this trap. But, you know, if, if our education system doesn't change around, we will vote ourselves into socialism slash communism. I agree. It'll happen. I agree. Adrian, I always look for, you brought up an excellent point, and I'm glad you called back, because I just, every time I get a chance, I'm going to absolutely take a baseball bat and slam socialism and communism. Thank you so much for your call. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you're certainly welcome. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right, sir. Keep up the fight. Thank you. Yeah, and then, you know, Jesse Jackson, remember old Jesse Jackson, Well, he's coming out and endorsing Bernie Sanders. You know, like Adrian said just a minute ago, it is absolutely amazing. It's jaw-dropping to think of not just the millennials in this country. No, not just those kids 30 and under supporting Bernie Sanders because of all the free stuff. But then you look at some of the older generation like Jesse Jackson coming out and endorsing Bernie Sanders, or some of, some of, and a lot of Hollywood. It's insanity to me. The greatest country ever on the face of the earth, with the greatest constitution ever written, and the best of capitalism and what it can afford to you, your family, your future, your growth, etc. And these nitgum poops, and they are, want to throw it away. Call or stand by. I'll be right there with you. I promise. I want to remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental. Sales, service, and parts, and they've got all the equipment from deuce on wheel loaders and excavators to all the bobcats, all the shapes and sizes, and all the lifting and the digging and the pushing and the carrying. I mean, they've got the equipment. Three locations, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and Nampa. Boy, they've got great 
financing programs and great leasing programs. What are you waiting for? Get a hold of them today. Barry Equipment and Rental, Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. A menu at the Burley Senior Center today. Spaghetti with meat sauce. Vegetable, salad, and, of course, yummy dessert. I'm one to come all. It's only five bucks, and you can get meals to go. All right. Joe, I've got a question for you real quick. When it comes to spaghetti, do you cut your spaghetti into small little pieces, or do you wrap it around your fork? I'm... I guess my hearing aid isn't working very good. Didn't hear you, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for your call, old buddy. I appreciate it. We'll send everybody over to the Senior Center. And that's on Overland in Burley. Joe Taylor, thank you so much. Appreciate it. God bless you. Good man right there. Yeah, this guy that uh, Bernie Sanders hired, uh, Philip Agnew, oh, boy. Um he absolutely wants to uh, imagine and try to promote a border-free tomorrow and is absolutely against having any kind of a prison. Can you imagine that? And this man hates the police and what they stand for and wants to see the absolute stoppage and end of capitalism and supports a open border. Y'all want to come in? Well, come on in. Bring the corona, not the virus. And this is the insanity of Bernie Sanders. And it's not a slam dunk yet, even though I think after tomorrow, Biden will have enough of the delegates going into the convention in Milwaukee. But it's not a slam dunk yet that Bernie won't be the possible nominee for the Democratic Party. And Biden's not any shade of color better. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You know, uh, over the weekend, my wife showed me a post on social media. I don't know where it was. And it showed Biden... Uh, so misspeaking, he was so fouled up that it sounded like he endorsed Trump for president. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I got it right here. I've got it right here. Yeah, uh, Randy, you're spot on, and I'm so glad you brought this up. Uh, and, and the Democrats and Biden are saying that uh, the Republican Party deceptively edited uh, Biden's comments. No, they didn't. Uh, Biden said in the clip posted by uh, what's on your news and other news, because here's how stumbly he was. Because we cannot reelect, we cannot win this reelection. Excuse me, we can only reelect Donald Trump. That. That's what Biden said. Right. And so the other day when he won Super Tuesday and his wife and his sister had swapped on him and they tried to make it out like it, you know, it was just a common accident. Yeah. And maybe it was. But, you know, he is so he's, uh, you know, there's people there's, you know, uh, doctors who say that he has signs of dementia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, he'll be easy to control once he's, if he's ever elected. But uh, I don't see how the pressure is heating up for both Bernie and Biden, and I do not see how Biden's going to withstand the pressure. He's not going to be able to withstand a debate with Donald Trump. Oh, no. You know, Randy, let me ask you this. Uh, Hillary, over the weekend, was asked by a news, so-called newscaster about who she would support. And she said, well, Bernie has never done anything. He's never passed anything, and, and nobody likes him. And then when asked whether she would support Biden or Bernie if they become the uh, nominee, she paused and she said, well, I'll support whoever they put up for the nominee because there is nobody 
else. Those are key words right there, because there's nobody else. I think even Hillary is admitting the Democratic Party doesn't have much of a horse to win the race. Well, I just don't see how it's going to work out for them. And and one person had said that they're just trying to decide who they put up as the loser. Yeah. Just try to make it look, you know, save face in some way or another. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, you know what needs to happen, of course, is we need to uh, pursue the investigations of what happened with Ukraine, Hunter and uh joe and joe's brother and i tell you what hunter biden is a is a train wreck we just haven't seen seen it on the news yet did you hear did you hear what uh donald trump jr did this morning when he challenged hunter biden did you hear about that uh-uh. Ah, you'll find this very interesting, and I think it's very open. Donald Trump Jr. this morning was on national news, and he challenged Hunter Biden to man up and debate him about who really profited from their father's public office. And uh, he said that if Hunter Biden wants to get involved and have a man up straight across debate, he'll release all of his tax returns. He'll release everything if Hunter Biden will. And you know as well as I do when it comes to that Ukrainian mess and making $83,000 a month, I don't think that Hunter Biden's going to accept the challenge. Do you? Well, Hunter Biden's too busy going to the uh, adult bar and too busy leaving crack pipes laying around, and he hasn't paid his uh, child support on, you know, the fatherless child. Uh, you know, he's a, like I said, he's a train wreck, and he's still driving. Mm -hmm. ah! Totally agree with you, Randy. Spot on. And uh, I've got another call waiting, and I got a weather forecast. I got to run. Call me back, please. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Caller number two, please bear with me just a minute because I've got to get the weather on. Don't hang up. Our weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And the lovely Christine Pickup sent us a note and said, Oh my goodness, you need to be hearing at your full potential, and you need to find out if there's a problem. And and they've got all the personalized service for your hearing problems at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. I understand they've got another number that you can call, and I'm going to share that number with you so you can write it on your refrigerator. It's 261-4757 for your annual hearing evaluation. Don't forget, I'll say it again, 261, of course, with the 208 prefix, you know that, 261-4757. Please give them a call and make a hearing evaluation scheduling today. They're right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And here is Gina with the weather. It's going to feel a little bit more like winter today. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Slight chance of rain and or snow showers off and on throughout the day. Plus it is going to be windy. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy skies. We are expecting a high of 51. Tonight that's going to continue but tapering off after midnight. Mostly cloudy skies. Low of 31. Tomorrow mostly sunny. Winds are going to be calming down. High of 53. Overnight low of 28. By Wednesday sunny and 58. That's going to be our warmest day of the week. Thursday sunny 54. And then by Friday, sunny 57. Let's look at your weather forecast for Thank you, Gina. The American Academy of Audiology and the Academy of Doctors of Audiology always recommend that individuals with hearing loss undergo an annual evaluation, so please call for an appointment today at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And the number, new number, 261-4757. Caller, thank you for your patience. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zebedee. How are you doing? Good, Bob. How are you? You know what I fear? If the Democrats should win, Biden or the other guy, they'll choose Hillary for a vice president. She'll have him assassinated, and then she'll be the president. Well, of course, that's a speculative type thing, but uh, and I'm not going to go in that direction and say that I agree with you, but I'm also not going to say that I disagree with you, Bob. I think there's a lot of things that are tangibles out there that mm, people had better listen and watch. Yeah, hmm, you got that right. Thanks, Evan. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. 
I, you know what Bob said. <sighs> you got to be really careful in the wording of such a statement. However, I still maintain that the ploys and the power of the Clintons is still very dangerous and still very active in politics today, more so than the Obamas. I honestly believe that the Clinton factors are to be dealt with and worried about. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I would pay money, honestly, to watch that debate between Donald Trump Jr. and Hunter Biden. Oh, that would really be fun. Donald Trump Jr. said, we can go full transparency. We show everything, and we can talk about all the places where I'm supposedly grifting, but Hunter Biden isn't. I would love to do it. I would love to do it. That would be interesting. And Joe, B- or I should say Donald Trump Jr. calling out Hunter Biden. We'll see what happens, if anything. Calls welcome, 436 2244 927 4587 Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Okay, let's just talk about a situation. If Donald Trump gets reelected, he puts in two more Supreme Court justices, he builds the wall as much as possible, okay? He's redone all of these trade deals. Uh, you know... A train in motion, in other words, an economy roaring with confidence and all these people out here investing in it, whether or not there's a coronavirus or the media wants to try to use it to stop the, the uh, you know, the economy. I'm driving down Overland and it's packed. <laughs> and so, you see what I'm saying? It's, you, you aren't going to stop this beast. And it's a positive thing. So... When Trump is out after eight years of Donald J. Trump, thank God, do we elect this Donald Trump Jr.? And I'm saying, yeah. You know, you bring up a really interesting conversation, Randy, to what are the Republican Party, the GOP, going to do, or are they prepared, or are they organized as a potential follow-up to the Trump administration, assuming that Donald Trump gets another four years, like you said, an eight-year period in as president? Uh, the looking for another person, let's exclude anybody in the Trump family right now. No other Trump, Donald Jr., whatever. The Republicans, the GOP, they're not doing any grooming, in my opinion. Who do you see? Who do you see other than what you just mentioned? Pence is going to run, you know. And so, and and I, I would like to think that Pence is underneath there. He's, uh, you know, he's going to you know, come forth and do what, you know, his predecessor has built. Is he Donald Trump? No, but can he be, maybe he just sits back in the sidelines and he's just, you know, doing what he's, you know, doing his job. And I don't, I don't see Pence as a weakling. I don't see Pence as afraid. I just see Pence being uh, polite and, and doing his job and not, you know, causing any waves. Of course, he, I don't. I think Mike Pence respects Mr. Donald J. Trump uh, immensely. I'm going to throw one other name at you. I'm going to throw one other name, and then I got to do a commercial to wrap up the hour. I'm going to throw a name that you probably have been thinking about. If not, let me know. But I have a lot of respect for this man because he's very straightforward. Doug Collins. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, even Jordan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. These those dudes. Yeah, these are the real. Uh, not Ryan or Rubio. No, Jordan and Collins and. Oh yeah. Hey, you know what? When Trump gave the State of the Union and he and and Pelosi, he didn't shake her hand. Of course, why would you? I, I believe that Nancy Pelosi. You're gonna laugh, and maybe I've already said this here before. I think she has a crush on Donald Trump because he's one of the only real men back there. 
I'm laughing. I'm laughing not at you, but I'm laughing at the situation. I got to run. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate it. You All right. Hey, don't forget the big spring tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Holy cow, you can save money. Holy cow, you get the greatest of service. Holy cow, you can hit the roads this spring and summer and just absolutely rely on safe driving with the best of tires from your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, yes, this big spring tire sale. This is the time to get in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland and Burley, the best. And don't forget the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, everything right there for your driving safety at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Got to run to the news. Be back in seven. Don't go away. All righty, here we go, hour number two on a Monday, the first Monday of the complete idiocy of daylight saving time. I don't like it. Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations right now with the big, big spring tire sale. Stop in and see them today. And Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn, seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, this good word for Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're all in the Jordan Circle. Western Way Services, we care about our Western Way Services, and I'm telling you folks, these people really care about getting rid of your garbage. I mean, whether you get on the route service or whether you want to talk to them about uh, dumpsters. And by the way, the dumpsters come in various sizes. Mm -hmm. I've got to get one. Deanne's ordered me to clean this office out coming closer to springtime, and I think I'm going to have to have the big one. (laughs) They come in various sizes. I'll need the big one to open the window and just pitch and throw. Well, I'll tell you what, they are there to serve you. Always at your disposal. Western Way Services, 734-6969. You get a hold of them today. Really, really good people. I want to remind you, too, that this afternoon, yes, I'm going to be over at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. A little bit more work on my knee and my hip, and uh, they do a great job. Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists there to serve you and help you with your aching and pain and then help you with the recuperation from a surgery or an accident. And it's so easy to get involved. All you have to do is just give them a call at 678-1191, make an appointment. They're located at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, and I urge you to call and work with the best. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 678-1191. Real quick, also our friends over at Hanson Mortuary, and they are so community-oriented and helping and serving, and I just absolutely think they're some of the nicest people anywhere, anytime. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. The number to call, 436-5636. And they always provide the families. They serve with the best possible support and comfort. And remember this, with the highest ethical standards and unquestioned integrity, they are there to serve you. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. It is Monday. 
And it's a time that we can kind of get a big broom and a dustpan and get rid of a lot of the clutter and whatever from politics and everything else by listening to a man that really has common sense as to what's going on. He is the president of Americans for Limited Government, co-author of the great book Necessary Noise with Star Parker, and enter stage left. Here he goes. Richard Manning, good morning. Hey, how are you? You, you feeling okay today? I am peachy wonderful, except for politics. That seems to boggle my mind. <laughs> no, don't let politics get you down. They, yeah, uh, yeah we, everything's good back here. Nothing, nothing happened anywhere. It's just a nice, quiet day in Washington, D.C. It's, it's quite quite uh, enjoyable. Let me ask you, though, Rick, you've been, uh, I'll call you my friend, even though we've never met and shook hands, I, I really have a lot of respect for you. Also, it's, uh, this is one of the joys of my week. So, well, I appreciate uh, that. I appreciate the opportunity to, to be on here with you. Well, thank you. I Am I wrong? I'm 72 years old, and maybe I'm looking at this thing the wrong way, and this thing is the coronavirus. I think that there are so many people on the left, and I can name names, you can too, that are stoking fears and the media stoking fears. And it's almost like, oh, we're living in end times. Chicken Little felt the egg, hit him in the head. I absolutely think that we're going overboard on this. Your thoughts about the coronavirus? Um, well, first of all, if, we're any, if we are living in old times, uh, buying toilet paper won't help you. Um, <laughs> you, you better get right with God. But it's a, um, I, I think this is, we had a, uh, swine, we had a virus that was similar in uh, 2009. I don't think anybody even remembers it. But, uh, you know, 33,000 people died. Um, but there was not the hysteria surrounding it that there is this with the coronavirus. Um, you know, the fact is, it's, it's a, from a market perspective, stock market perspective, it's an, uh, there's unknowables, and the market does not like um, uncertainty, and so they they pull back their pull back the uh, aggressive buy, and we end up with a correction, probably a correction that's need was needed anyway, in terms of resetting stock prices. Um, the uh, in terms of people's personal behavior. You know, be prudent. You know, the, the thing, there's two things that, that basically um, are, are true about a virus of any type. Um, they, they will spread um, through human contact. Um, this one seems to be strictly by, you know, coughing or sneezing on people uh, is the main way that it spreads. The, it is a... Um, it's unclear about you know the uh, relative fatality rates in it, um, but what I do know is this: you know we had a we had uh, somebody who had the virus or tested positive for the virus who was at a uh, conservative political action committee meeting last a week and a half ago, and the um, and CDC is told that people who had met this individual that um, once they that you see. You see results, you either get sick or you don't within four to nine days after um, being exposed. And so people like Senator Ted Cruz is engaged in voluntary quarantine, even though he's, he's outside the nine-day period of, uh, of the CDC sets. Um, Paul Gosar is doing the same thing from Arizona. And it's a, you know, so be prudent. It's just, you know, it's one of those things. There's no need to panic. Just be smart. Absolutely. Be smart means, you know, have you know, have basic supplies in your house in the event that some supply chains get disrupted. Be you know, be smart about um, you know, don't go off and you know, put yourself into positions where you're hang, hanging out with a bunch of people who are sick. Don't sit there and think it's like the measles and have try to have coronavirus parties so everybody can get it. You know, be prudent. And if you feel if you feel as though you're under the weather, don't go share it with everybody else. That's that's the basic, you know, it's basically what you can do. And it's a, um, you know, they'll probably come up with a, a vaccine for it um, to treat next year's version because these things mutate. Well, there'll be a next year's version. Um, 
and but just the, from a basic policy perspective, from a personal perspective, be smart. You know, the it, it's this kind of stuff is uh, you know. I'm old enough to remember the swine flu that uh, that uh, President Ford was getting us all worked up about in mm-hmm. 75 or 76, and uh, not enough people got sick, and so people were all disappointed. But that was a, and kind of made fun of them about it. But the fact is we didn't have social media back then. And if we had social media back then, we would have learned every single case of swine flu that uh, was contracted. We would know every single person who died of it. We'd know exactly where they lived. We'd be following it like it's a like it's a professional football game, and it's a and the reality is, in some respects, um, knowledge is not is not good if it if it breeds paranoia. So, relax. You know, you're you know, let's say there's a extraordinary chance that you uh, probably will not contract it, and if you do, there's an even better chance that it will have the minimal um, impact. The story in the Washington Post that published today talks about, it had an interview, you know, this guy says, I have coronavirus, and it's really not that bad. In fact, he says it's, he's got it, and, you know, it's, if it were anything else, he'd probably been going to work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's, but he's quarantined, and just reporting about what his impact, what his, uh, what's happened with him with it. You know, if you're, you know, the State Department said don't, if you're, um, don't go on cruise ships because you're in a closed environment. Um, they're recommending that people who are susceptible, who are most vulnerable to it, which are older people who have a history of, particularly if they have a history of uh, respiratory problems, or your immunity or your immune system is somewhat uh, impaired. Um, you know, that don't you know, don't go on planes, don't don't travel for a while. And so there's some, so there are urging basic precautions, and I think those are wise. Absolutely. Very well stated. Okay, now I'm going to say this, and I want you to jump right in and chew me out if you don't agree with any of the premise that I'm going to lay out. But I'm beginning to really believe that the left and the media are really using the coronavirus as a tool as a tool in their toolbox to just loosen up all the lug nuts and hurt this re-election for Donald Trump. They're utilizing this as a tool against re-election. Now, how wrong am I? Oh, I don't think you're wrong. The, uh, it's pretty clear. You just look at Twitter responses and the like and, and various complaints. Uh, you know, there's nothing that this president can do that's, that would be good enough. Um, it's a, you've got a, uh, you know, people complaining there aren't enough testing kits. Well, the president isn't creating the threat testing kits. There's nothing he's doing that stops the CDC from buying testing kits or anything else. So it's a, you know, so they, he's allowing, at one point they say, let the people in lab coats have their way. And on the other side, they say, when the people in lab, when they don't like what the people in lab coats are doing, they blame the president. So, you know, ultimately, the CDC is having sway over what's happening, by and large. Um, The one area where uh, the CDC did not win, um, it's pretty clear, and the press isn't really reporting this, there was a, um, we brought back out of China about 1,500, 1,600 people who were um, exposed to the coronavirus in in a pretty massive airlift. And it was done by a State Department agency, by an Obama-appointed official who's in a career position in an obscure agency that nobody's ever heard of, and who's responsible for this kind of stuff. And this guy went ahead and followed his quote-unquote protocol and never asked permission, never asked a political, never asked anybody up chain, just started, just ordered the airlifts, um, which ordinarily would be within his purview. But in kind of normal protocol, but under these circumstances, one would have thought that he would have gone and reached out to uh, to somebody who is in a political chain of command who could give him an order to do so or not. Um, he did so de- directly contravening uh, what the CDC wanted to happen, and as and because the CDC was concerned that in these kind of situations you have to the, the best way you could deal with it is to is to isolate it. Um, and they didn't want 1,600 
potential patient zeros coming to America. Now, when they didn't know, didn't know enough to be uh, to be smart, and yet uh, this career bureaucrat um, who was appointed by Obama to the position um, made that decision on their own and quite proudly made that decision on their own um, because they weren't uh, tainted by political considerations. Well, that's a decision that could come back and be blamed on the president. Mm -hmm. And so many of the things that that happen are being done by the normal protocols that, you know, the the president put Mike Pence in charge of trying to get his arms around. All of those different protocols are being taken. Um, So there isn't, uh, there aren't decisions being made in a vacuum. And, and so I think that that's the, he's made the right decision by putting Mike Pence in charge of that. But getting, there's so many different protocols that are used throughout the government that, um, that the people just implement. And they do it in a vacuum without having, you know, any knowledge of the political impact. And really, and then downstream, and if, if the president says, no, we don't want to do that, and it, and it blows up, then they blame, then they, go off and they uh, leak it to the Washington Post and suddenly the president did something that was violating the standards of CDC, when in fact, the CDC, if you're blaming about test kits, if you're not about test kits like the Democrats are, blame the CDC. The, the lab coat guys are the, are the problem, not the president. Absolutely. Well stated. Uh, caller, real quick, you're on the air with a question. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning. Uh do you feel that politicians on both sides of the aisle, millionaires and billionaires, are dumping money into this market right now because they know the market's going to come back and they are going to reap the harvest for it? And they want to keep this thing going for a while. That's a good question. Well, Go ahead, Rick. Well, let me. I'm going to give you uh, um, some wisdom that I gained a long, long time ago watching a simple movie, It's a Wonderful Life. And... Mr. Potter is sitting there talking to George Bailey, and he says, George, during the uh, the bank runs, I you kept your head, and you saved the building alone, and I kept my head, and I saved the rest of the town. And, you know, then George Bailey says, you bought the rest of the town. Why everyone else was, was panicking, you bought it all. And it's accusatory in that regard. But you know what? That's what happens. It's a, if people panic... Um, you know, when people panic and they start selling in panic mode, they have to sell to somebody, and they sell to people who say, I think that this panic is short-lived. So panic never works. There's a reason why one of the single most used phrases in the entirety of the Bible is God telling people, do not be afraid. Okay? It is the sing- it's, it's, it's throughout the Bible you see that. Mm-hmm. Now, from being strong and courageous, do not be terrified, um, and for the Lord your God is with you, uh, for all the days in, in Joshua to, you know, the angel telling Mary, don't be afraid. To the angel, te- Gabriel telling the shepherds in the field, do not be afraid. It is throughout the Bible, do not be afraid. When we act in fear, we, we get it wrong. Okay, unless it's an immediate fight or flight situation. If it's a, if your brain, if you're, you know, obviously fight or flight, that's different. But if you're in a, but if you're in a fear, or you're operating from a fear mode in terms of investing or any of that stuff, there, the people who are buying are the ones who are sitting there who are who are essentially collecting, are taking advantage of that fear, and your willingness to take a loss to get out at any cost, and that is is bad investing. It's not only bad investing; it's a bad way to live your life. Absolutely. God tells us not to be afraid for a very simple reason. Because if we truly trust in God, we have nothing we should fear. Because if God's with us, who can be against us? And ultimately, if a few dollars get lost in the stock market or that kind of stuff happens, you know, it's it's a matter of what we worship. Yep. And so I, I look at it, and I, I can be a little sanguine about it. Um, my wife's not real happy with me because some of our retirement investments aren't doing so great. But... The, but when you get down to it, it's all a matter of what you worship. Yep. And if you worship money, then you get fr- you get really scared here and you worry a lot. But if you worship God, you know He's in control, and you know, and the, the market will roll up and down. And if you're not afraid, you can hang loose and uh, hopefully get some bargains. 
Absolutely. And you know, uh, not to throw a Bible verse into our conversation, but I think it does sum everything up. Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. I think that sums it up. Exactly right. Very good. Good poll. I was going, I was going off the top of my head. I hope you were able to you were able to do that one off the top of your head. That's a that's when I need to get into my uh, into my brain into my memory banks. Be still and know that I am God. That is exactly right. You, Rick, I got to throw one other subject to you, and I've only got three and a half minutes left. But here we have no. Bernie, the old communist grump versus the lights are on but nobody's home biden and tomorrow is another super tuesday and to be honest with you neither one of them are good qualifiers to take the nomination what are your thoughts about what's going to happen with the delegates well i will tell you that the the play that the democrat establishment is doing is they're pushing for biden and the fight here here in D.C. is who gets to be vice president because the assumption is uh, that that person will get to be president. Uh, the other the other piece of this puzzle is people like Hillary Clinton are in fact uh, waiting in the wings and saying, you know, if we get to a convention, these are your two choices. Um, I'm available to run, and and so you. Yeah, we may get uh, you know the third sequel of the Hillary Clinton campaign for president, um, and uh, it would be the ultimate. Um, I don't know how she pulls the party together because the Bernie people then would have been burned by her twice, and there's no way she pulls the party together. But a lot of people might look at her as being a stable, a stable hand at the top on the race, so at least they know what they're getting and uh, won't have down ballot consequences and might even be able to win. Um, if this coronavirus thing turns out to be terrible, and they can uh, and they can lay it on the de- on the uh, down the desk of Donald Trump, at that point it's a which is what they're trying to do. So it's a you know we'll we'll see. It's a I think I think your analysis is correct, and I think people like uh, Hillary Clinton are waiting in the wings, hoping that they'll get another shot and bite the apple without having to work too hard to get it. You know, there's a lot of things I wanted to talk to you about, uh, more so on the stock market and especially crude oil, but I'm out of time. Real quick, give me your opinion on the saying this morning that crude oil could go from 30 to even lower to $20 a barrel. What do you think the net effect is going to be on the economy if that happens? Real quick. Um, gas prices will be down, which is stimulative, um, and you'll have a, but our oil sector will be in trouble. And it, uh, it'll be a net neutral, but on, from a consumer, and you'll end up paying a lot less for gasoline and for delivery of goods. Absolutely. Trucks and stuff will we'll be paying a lot less for diesel. Absolutely. I wish we had more time, but I want to say thanks to the President of Americans for Limited Government, my friend Rick Manning. God bless you, man. Look forward to next Monday. Thank you so much. Very good. Take care, Zeb. Hopefully the market's up next Monday. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. I really look forward to having him on the program every Monday, and he gives you really some insight that you can't get anywhere else. Up close and personal right here with Rick Manning. Thank you very much. Uh, Before we go to our next guest, and I just, you know those little deals you can put on your desk that hold all the papers and everything? I just tipped that over, and all the papers went helter-skelter all over the place. Uh, I want to remind you, too, about our friends at Let's Ride. You know, with the weather kind of leaning towards springtime you're probably saying well by golly Martha we've never had any four wheelers let's check it out at Let's Ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World well they have got a showroom full I do not know I have never figured it out how they got all that in that showroom. It's unbelievable. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. And if you do have four-wheelers already, now is the time. Now is the time, believe me, to get them serviced and ready to go. So all you got to do is just call them or stop over, make an appointment for their service department to get everything ready in ship shape for this spring and summer. Let's ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert in the world, and this is where the fun is sold. Really, really good people. Uh, Another company over and business over in that area that I want to highlight and talk about 
is Cameron and Siemens Insurance. My, 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 yes, Todd and the crew, wonderful, wonderful people that are really serving you and very accessible and devoted to helping you with your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Now, you call the number. Make an appointment. Make sure that you, your family, and your business are protected. Call them at 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance. My next guest on the program is, uh, he's not just a guest, I mean he's a doggone good friend and has been for a long time and uh, I just can't wait to get him on the air every Monday and talk about various things that are going on or not going on uh, with our government as far as uh, immigration and uh, trying to protect us, the citizens of this country. And I say a good morning to Golden Colorado's Frosty Woolridge. Hello, Frosty. How are you? Uh, he's there, sir. I apologize. I had to call him. All right. Frosty, how are you this morning? Good morning, Zeb. Yes, uh, doing very well. Uh, just ready to go. Uh, start of the week, and let's get to them. Well, you have written recently a couple of very, very interesting uh, pieces that I want you to comment on in general, and it's the balkanization of America accelerating faster than expected and really nothing being done about it and the demise of our country its values, its morality, its constitution. I guess what I'm saying to you is I'm surprised people can't see the handwriting on the wall. Well, it's really amazing to uh, so many of us that what this handwriting is getting uh, thicker uh, by the day. And as you all know, we're adding, uh, just last year, we added uh, well over 3 million immigrants. That's uh, legal, illegal, and their birth rates. And we're added, you know, we're headed for another hundred million of them uh, in this country by 2050. And again, as I've said, they're coming from 196 different countries that they didn't like, they couldn't survive in, they didn't uh, do well in, and they couldn't provide for them. And so they, like rats, fled the ship, if you will. They fled uh, Somalia, uh, Sudan, uh, India, China, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Mexico. Uh, uh, El Salvador, I mean, I can just go on and on, Brazil, uh, Ethiopia, and they're coming to America, and we're essentially becoming balkanized, and for those of you, I, I had a couple of readers say, well, what is balkanization? Balkanization is when it, you put uh, a lot of uh, incompatible uh, pieces of humanity into the same uh, area, the same arena, and you try to mix the cultures, you try to mix the religions, and so, uh, to give you an example, uh, move uh, uh, somebody from uh, Somalia uh, into small town America, uh, and, and these people have no education, they have no skills, they have no ability to uh, function in a first world country. If I wanted to turn that around, let's just move you and your family to uh, uh, Ethiopia or, or Somalia or Congo and see how you would work out, and of course the, the, the resulting uh, situation would be balkanization. Uh, anger, frustration, uh, exasperation, your culture, your language, your way of life doesn't fit with theirs. That's what balkanization is. And this started back in 1965 uh, with the Immigration Reform Act by Teddy Kennedy, Howard Metzenbaum, Jacob Javits. It was never debated. It all of a sudden started dumping 1.2 to 1.5 million immigrants into America from incompatible countries. Well, do you now see that we are fractured and fragmented across the country at, at such a rate of speed that it's incredible. Whether you go to Minneapolis, Minnesota, or you go to Los Angeles with uh, their 60,000 people living on tents and tarps and on the streets and uh, sleeping on a, uh, a cardboard mattress, if you will, and, and all of that that cannot be solved. And so what's happening is all these things that we're facing right now, every day in the news you hear of some racial conflict of some kind. It's a Muslim conflict. Uh, it's a Muslim bomber. It's a female genital mutilation. That's not part of what America's all about. Honor killings, that's not what uh, America's all about. And yet that's what's going on in America. 
And I just brought all these out in this piece, and you can go to newswithviews.com and look up Balkanization of America Accelerating Faster Than Expected. And what I've done is I've brought in uh, The Strange Death of Europe, uh, which is a book by Douglas Murray. And uh, Strange Death of Europe is a bestseller over there, uh, subtitled Immigration, Identity, and Islam. And they've completely balkanized themselves to the point where Europeans are no longer uh, in charge of, of, of Europe. Uh, they've got 55 uh, million Muslims, and they are now taking charge. Well, I also said in this piece that within another 30 years, someone will be writing a book called The Strange Death of the United States of America by her own hand, uh, because we're doing the same thing to ourselves. Uh, and, you know, some of the examples are, in the past week, Missouri State Senator Maria Chappelle wrote, uh, said out loud in a news conference, I hope Trump is assassinated. Uh, guess what? Another one in my state of Colorado, Denver Councilwoman Candy DeBaca said, if I get the coronavirus, I'm going to attend as many mega rallies as I can. Uh, and, of course, President uh, presidential candidate Bernie Sanders said, and I'm quoting, Trump is a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, and a religious bigot, unquote, which of course makes all the rest of us who voted for him uh, in the same camp uh, by association. And, and, and then you see uh, the Somalian immigrant and House member Ilan Omar uh, she said, I want all Muslims in America to make all Americans uncomfortable, unquote. Well, guess what? She's not even an American, and she's actually illegally in our country, and at some point they're going to literally indict her and, and deport her for immigration fraud. But that's what she just said. And, you know, and, and so I just said, well, uh, indeed, they have made us uncomfortable. Uh, Muslims have made Americans uncomfortable because they are the ones that did 9-11, the Fort Hood murders, Fort Dix attacks, the New York car bar bomber, the San Bernardino killings, the Garland, Texas uh, killings, uh, the, four, uh, the uh, Orlando uh, massacre of 50 people at a gay nightclub, the Denver bomber. We've got an average of uh, 23 to 27 honor killings every year in our country right now, and the female genital mutilation cases up to 500,000. Uh, that's a part uh, of, a, of a sixth century third world country, and, and that's what they do. And so that's what is happening to us. And, and look at you have Charles Schumer uh, last week told the Supreme Court because he didn't like their stance uh, uh, that they might uh, you know, go in favor of anti-abortion and, and Roe v. Wade, he said, you will pay a price. He threatened the Supreme Court. So we're, And then even the Chief Justice had to respond, and he said, justices know the criticism comes with the territory, but threatening statements of this sort from the highest levels of the government are not only inappropriate, they are dangerous. All members of the court will continue to do their job without fear or favor from whatever quarter, unquote. And again, talk about balkanization. We got the Council on American Islamic Relations. They're working 24 7 to bring Sharia law to America. And if any of you don't know what Sharia law is, it's against everything that America and the Constitution stands for. And yet we have the Muslim Brotherhood working uh, with black minorities to pull them in. And we've got, of course, La Raza, which is, uh, there's 15 million illegal Mexicans in our country, uh, and they're working to recapture the four border states. Uh, Don Lemon, the minority gay CNN news host who happens to be a, a black guy, said the most dangerous terrorists in America are white men. Uh, that's what's happening to us. And... If for anyone that doesn't understand the acceleration of that, we're about to add 100 million immigrants. Have I made that pretty clear with this column, Zip? It's an outstanding column, and I read it, and I reread it, and I highlighted it. And I came up with the same very simplistic question. And the question is, why? Why is there no longer pride in America? I think that's a fair question. Well, it's because we've got 45 million people who were not born here, uh, who have no affinity to a Western culture, Western thought, and certainly uh, they have religions and cultures and ethos that are really incompatible with America. 
And that's what you're seeing manifest. And as I said, and I said at the end of this, if you are reading this column, whether liberal, independent, millennial, or conservative, do you think our country will survive uh, 2050 when we have another 110 million more legal immigrants uh, added to this country with all the sociological, religious, linguistic, and cultural chaos that comes with them? Uh, I don't know why nobody sees this, but I know you and I see it, and I know I got my my inbox got flooded when this came out uh, last Thursday. And honest to gosh, people are sitting. There's a lot of people that see this, but everybody doesn't have the gumption or the guts to stand up and speak out and say, "Hey, let's stop this." And of course, my solution is let's stop. Let's shut down all immigration into America until we got our own house in order. Yeah, your your piece and all the pieces that you have written and your books. I mean, we've talked about all of this on this program many, many, many times. And it absolutely stuns me, stuns me that with the facts and the figures all compilated into your writings, why people ignore really what's going on and bury their head in the sand. Well, at the same time, Zeb, there's no, you know how clear I am about all of this, and I know another about 40 or 50 uh, top experts that I, uh, I run in the circles with, whether it's Chris Clugston, who wrote the book Blip, that tells us and shows us that we're going to run out of all of our metals and minerals by 2050, which will cause a complete collapse of this country. There's, it'll, it'll collapse, literally, our way of life. And, and, and it's, it's not if it's coming, it's when it's coming, and yet we're accelerating that exhaustion of those minerals and metals by adding another 110 million more immigrants uh, from all over the world. Uh, but there are people in power there in D.C. that have extraordinary uh, power and money to make sure that the immigration uh, invasion doesn't stop. Those are the corporate heads. Those are the La Quinta hotels. That's uh, McDonald's. That's Chipotle's, who hires all these illegals. That's certainly Marriott Hotels. It, it's uh, Hormel Foods in Minnesota. Uh, it's uh, Tyson Chicken in California and in Kentucky. Uh, it's, it's Montfort. You, I can go on and on. There are people who really don't care about the future of America. They, it's called a Faustian bargain. Sell your economic soul for the, for the present riches and luxuries uh, and to heck with the future. And so, and they have more power than you and me. They have more money. And that's why in 20 years that you and I have been together on this show, and I've, I've interviewed on national shows across the country, I've been on 1,500 radio shows and on television saying, here's what's coming if we don't change course. And yet those people in power are lobbying with the Washington, D.C. folks. They're bribing them. And those, the borders continue. I mean, Trump hasn't stopped a single immigrant. He hasn't slowed down the illegal immigration. He certainly hasn't slowed down the legal immigration. And neither have the two senators from Idaho or the House member. They haven't done anything to stop it. And that's the same in my state. And so that's what it's all about. Somebody wants more money rather than save their own country for their own children. Yeah, and the fear. I want to go back just quickly, if I may, to the paragraph that you had written about Ilhan Omar of Minnesota. I, I just don't understand why the American... American public can, first of all, vote for someone like her to be in the House of Representatives, and secondarily, with her inflammatory comments like, I want all Muslims in America to make all Americans feel uncomfortable, I mean, how and why are we putting ourselves at risk through the ballot box of putting these anti-Americans in offices of power? Well, you go back to the fact that Obama dumped all... There's, there's now 125,000 Somalis, 9 out of 10 of them on welfare, and they will be for life because they have no skills. They have an average IQ of 68. That has been documented. You can look it up. Just look up on the uh, Internet, uh, IQ by country. Uh, these people li literally don't have the, the intellectual horsepower to function in a first world country. But you, you go back to uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and that entire district, which also uh, actually has the, the most uh, terrorists that go back uh, to the Middle East and or Africa to fight uh, in the uh, jihadist wars over there, uh, they are the ones that elected her, but guess what? Somebody put 125,000 Somalis right there in the middle of Minneapolis, uh, and they've created Somaliland. So w 
we have some pretty powerful people in powerful places with a lot of money that are out to destroy the cohesive uh, American culture that has made this country so successful. And guess what? They're doing a heck of a job. Well, you know, you had some excellent quotes, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that uh, Denver Councilwoman, Candy DeBaca, uh, and the insanity. If a Republican or a conservative like you or I or others of our ilk had made a statement even in jest on the radio or television or in a newspaper story, if I get the coronavirus, I'm going to attend as many Make America Great Again rallies as I can to deliberately infect people, why, my goodness, Frosty, they'd have our heads on platters. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that we would have people in front of our house, your house, my house, your ranch, and uh, it, it, it would be absolute uh, mayhem uh, because that that's just it's just incredible uh, that she said that and then then she gets away with it uh, but the same thing with Ilhan Omar, Omar. She, she gets away with so many states but the fact that Don Lemon who is a, a major CNN host telling that white men in America are, are the uh, the biggest terrorists that is so racist I mean, it's beyond racist. It sets the benchmark for racism. And guess what? It didn't cause a blip. But I guarantee you, if any if any b- b- member of the of the of the media said that, well, we're just going to have to go after uh, all of the uh, black men in America because they're the biggest terror, I, he would be chopped up to liver and fired within five minutes of making a statement like that. Why are we letting this happen, though? I mean, it's our fault. And when I say our, it's conservatives, people of family values, etc., that are sitting back saying, and I honestly believe this, oh, well, I don't want to get involved. It'll all blow over in a short period of time. That's the problem. Everybody's too blasé about this. Yeah, well, uh, and I can tell you this. It's not going to blow over. <laughs> Amen. It is, it is not going to blow over in just a short amount of time what what we're facing here uh, and and what's coming uh with another 110 million immigrants into our country none of us is going to escape this not a farm boy in idaho not a ranch hand in texas not not a farmer in michigan i mean you uh, people in maine california I've seen Los Angeles. I've seen the future by traveling through Los Angeles. I've seen the future by going through Minneapolis, Minnesota. I stayed outside of Somaliland, but oh my gosh, I did travel through the Dearborn, Michigan, and Hamtramck. I mean, and this is not being reported by the mainstream press, folks. They they will not. You you go to Dearborn, Michigan. You you have just walked into Little Baghdad. If, if you look, walk, if you walk, or you try to walk, or go through a Minneapolis there in Somaliland, you are, you might as well call yourself in Somalia. Uh, it, it's unbelievable how fast our demographic is changing, and, and the Mexicans. There's 15 million illegal Mexicans in this country, and they're changing our schools. The educational systems are going down the toilet. And it, you, you, La Raza is gaining more and more members there in, in Texas uh, and then New Mexico and uh, uh, certainly uh, California and Arizona. And you're right. Nobody is standing up and saying a thing about it. And guess what? In the end, we're all going to become the victims of this thing as our country turns and changes from America to some kind of a multicultural quagmire that's now got a death grip on Europe, and certainly a death grip on Canada right now. You go, go to Montreal, go to Ottawa, go, go to Toronto, go to Vancouver. Vancouver's no longer Canada, I can tell you. So I don't know what else to do. All I can do is speak up and lay the facts out, but it's each and every one of you listening to this show. I'm, I'm going to see my two senators this uh, month. I've got a 45-minute uh, you know, appointment with them, and I'm, I'm giving them the facts as the sheer numbers. And, and I, I passed that, I, I, and I've tried to get on 60 Minutes, and I've tried to get on and Meet the Press and Face the Nation and NPR, and, and they, they are terrified of, of reporting this thing. And they're terrified of somebody like me who just puts the facts on the table. And that's why I'm sure the higher-ups uh, are making sure that Frosty Wooldridge does not go on NPR or 60 Minutes. Because the American people, when they start seeing facts like this, they, they would 
roar up, if you will, and start voting these scoundrels out of office. I mean, everybody should show, uh, re- literally, almost uh, out of 100 senators, 90 of them should be voted out of office immediately. And the same thing with most of the representatives, because they are not uh, adhering to their oath of office and so their sworn loyalty to adjudicate and enforce the U.S. Constitution. That's not happening by the majority of the 535 people that now represent us right there in Washington, D.C. You know, and I'm not trying to paint you into a corner here, Frosty, but I've got to ask this because I'm kind of at a loss as to how to answer it myself. Is there a simplistic answer as to how to cure this attitude in America of forget the past and accept socialism and communism now? I mean, we've got to have some kind of an answer to restore respect and decency for America. I don't know what it is. You know, it. You know, it. it, it it's got. I'm buffaloed by the whole thing. I, 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 because they're really other than Tom Cotton from Arkansas who wants to shut the borders down. A senator, he's a U.S. senator, uh, and Steve King from Iowa, who's uh, tried to stop the anchor baby phenomenon. By, by the way, folks, you're now paying for last year, 2019, a record 372,000 anchor babies. That means 372,000 pregnant women came across the borders illegally and or legally with birth to tourism, and they birthed their child, and they, that child now is a, a, a citizen of the United States, uh, 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 unethically, of course and a misinterpretation of the 14th Amendment. But we're paying for those kids, 372000 in the year 2019. And it's, it, nobody's done a thing. Steve King, uh, he tried to, he's got H.R. 140, I think it is, trying to stop that misinterpretation of the 14th Amendment, but it just stays in committee. Nobody will move it out. It just goes to show you. Uh, we should have the Marine Corps and the Army down on the border right now. Absolutely. A massive invasion of our country. We should have ICE. Uh, we should we should have outlaw all the 500 uh, sanctuary cities. These are mayors and council members of these cities that are allowing and giving immunity to illegal aliens within their midst. I mean, our own people are protecting criminals who violated our borders. And and and, and out of the 20 odd five million illegals in this country, there are hundreds of thousands of criminals, and they all get immunity here in this country. It's astounding that we're literally slicing our own... You might as well just slice your own throat. That's what they're doing in these sanctuary cities as far as ICE and as far as enforcing our laws. I, 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 I've never seen a... I don't know when the last country to commit suicide was out there in history other than Rome, but we're hot on their tails and certainly looking at Sweden and Norway and all of France and certainly Germany and all that's going on over there. And now Greece is being completely overrun. Uh, these countries must just not want to exist, and they don't want to be Greek anymore. They want to be African, and they want to be Middle Eastern, and they want to be Muslim, because they aren't doing a darn thing to stop it. And guess what? Neither are we. Absolutely. We're out of time, but we're also going to tell everybody that every week we're going to keep on plugging with these issues. We're going to keep on vocalizing the problems and talk about the facts. Frosty Woldridge, God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Thank you, sir, and we'll talk to you next week, Zeb. All right, Frost, take care. Thank you very, very much. We've got to run to the weather forecast right now. Oh, boy. You know, one of these days I'm going to fix these headsets. They broke. And why did they break? Because I sat on them. (laughs) And one ear kind of loops off to the side a little bit, and the other earpiece kind of starts sliding forward, and i got to fix that. Caller, I'll be right there. I've got to get a weather forecast on. Stay on hold. I'll be right there. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane & Company, bringing you the weather. They provide the best, the best in accounting services to the Minicasha area and have for over 50 years. It is tax time, and you want the best people working for you, and that's, of course, the professionals, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Tax return preparations, tax planning, business consulting, retirement planning, all of this and more with offices in Burley and Rupert. I said the best, they are the professionals, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to feel a little bit more like winter today. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Slight chance of rain and or snow showers off and on throughout the day. 
Plus, it is going to be windy, gusts as high as 22 miles an hour, mostly cloudy skies. We are expecting a high of 51. Tonight, that's going to continue, but tapering off after midnight. Mostly cloudy skies, low of 31. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Winds are going to be calming down, high of 53. Overnight, low of 28. By Wednesday, sunny and 58. That's going to be our warmest day of the week. Thursday, sunny, 54. And then by Friday, sunny, 57. Let's look at your weather forecast for Zeppet the Ranch. Thank you very much. And Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company coming on the program and reminding you about the best of professional accounting services to you, your family, and your business. Offices in Burley and Rupert, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Caller, I've got a minute and a half. Good morning. You're on the air. Okay, uh, Zeb, uh, this weekend I was at one of our major retailers here. And I saw more of these foreigners pulling out that credit card, paying for huge sums of merchandise. And the first thought that came to my mind was, with automation coming, we are going to be stuck with these people permanently who will be permanently on welfare that you and I are going to be paying for. Well, there's so much about the refugee programs and the uh, programs of letting illegal aliens come in and basically live in your hometown and your society and bringing in more people from overseas. There's so many things that the American public really has to stop and analyze about the cost factors and the danger factors. I'm out of time right now on this issue of this hour, but I want to tell you, Tony, I'm going to stay on top of it like I do every day. Thank you so much. I'll be listening. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to remind everybody that next hour we've got uh, at 10.06 Dr. Gerard Lomero. And when it comes to politics and the analyzing of what's going on politically, nobody, nobody does a better job. And he's going to be coming up next hour. He's got that brand new book called Real World Socialism, Spiritual, Moral, and Economic Bankruptcy, Sold by Using False Hopes and Deceit. He's going to be on at 10.06. And then at 10.30, this morning, it's the Idaho Legislative Update, and we're expecting a call from Representative Fred Wood. All of that coming up in the next hour, Zeb at the Ranch, and right now, Old Wheels is ready to take us up to CBS News. Uh, good morning. Kind of a hazy, cloudy, dreary looking Monday out there this morning, but we'll try to brighten things up a little bit on Zeb at the Ranch, and of course brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations with a great big, I mean really big, spring tire sale going on right now. Also, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you, and our friends at Greystone Crossing senior living at 1221 21st street in hayburn have you taken my advice seniors and called the number 650-4979 i'll say it again 650-4979 contact matt or kelly and try to get an appointment to have them show you around graystone crossing it is a beautiful 12 bedroom home and they furnish uh, three meals a day snacks housekeeping local transportation it's a beautiful place, a friendly place you can really enjoy. And that's Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. That number again, 650-4979. Seniors living the good life with friends. And before we go to our guest, I also want to remind you, too, about 7K Metals. And uh, I really, really am glad that uh, Lon Hardy and Sharon Wilmot got a hold of me, oh, four or five months ago, and talked to me about silver purchases through 7K Metals. You can really help yourself build your financial security and your future. It's kind of like creating your own security bank, and uh, it's a great savings opportunity, and then also a value treasure for your loved ones. I urge you to find out more. Tell them I told you to call. Please use my name. Contact Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon Wilmot at 430-3259. And remember, 7K Medals. Thank you very much.
Right now, let's go to the phone line. And uh, every time I have this gentleman on the program, he gives me a real feeling of uh, there's going to be hope. There's going to be a better day ahead. And he's just finished another book called Real World Socialism, Spiritual, Moral, and Economic Bankruptcy, Sold by Using False Hopes and Deceit, written by my friend, Dr. Gerard Lamero. Good morning. How are you? I am doing terrific, and it's great to be with you. You know, on the back cover of your book, at the very end of all the things that you finish on that yellow cover on the back page, it says this book would be a perfect gift for high school students and high- and college students. Amen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be contacting you, and then you tell me where to go. I'm going to be buying quite a few of these books to give to people that I know should have this and understand what's really happening in this country. That's a great idea, great gift. I think so, too. And, you know, part of the reason I wrote this is because a year ago, I realized the number one, you know, I follow the trends, you know, that the number one issue this year was going to be socialism. And I realized most people don't know what socialism is, how bad it terribly is. And I felt that uh, college students, especially, and high school students, they have teachers or professors. A lot of them are Marxists and socialists. And they don't like our country, and they condemn our country. And, and these kids, you know, they're just growing up. They don't have all the answers. And I've been researching this for years and years, so I thought I'd do a book on this and explain to them the threat of socialism. I mean, it is a terrible ideology. It's absolutely horrible. And this book goes into all the details. It gives all the reasons they say it's good, and I explain why it isn't and why those reasons are false. And then I give all the reasons why capitalism and freedom are far superior to socialism. And so besides being a good book for us folks who talk on talk radio and our listeners to to read for themselves, it's a perfect gift for college kids, high school students who have to deal with socialism uh, as teachers and professors. And they need to have answers so that they don't get indoctrinated. Absolutely. Dr. Lomero, I want to start the program off this morning by talking about the two that are left on the Democratic ticket. One is an old communist grump, and the other, you could say the lights are on, but nobody's at home, Joe Biden. And uh, this is the choice that one of those is going to be the nominee for the Democratic Party. And you got to say to yourself, is that really the best they've got left in the bucket? Well, I'll tell you, if those two were the only two, but I don't think that's where the race is going to end. It's changing, and I'm about getting close to making a new forecast, because let's face it, the rules are changing, uh, a lot of things are going on, and I have to update my forecast any time the trends change. And right now, it's looking more and more like uh, by, uh, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden are going to more or less tie with with neither one of them getting a majority of delegates, neither one of them getting the nomination, this falling into the convention, the second ballot on the convention, all the superdelegates get to vote. And right now it's looking more and more to me that this party is going to pick either Michelle Obama or, perish the thought, Hillary Clinton is standing in the wings waiting to get back. And one of those two women may actually get the nomination. They both will lose to Trump. But... The case is that this race is not between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden alone. Uh, he keeps making gaffes that are just incredible. Uh, he said he was part of the Biden Obama uh, Democrat. He was an Obama Biden Democrat yesterday. What mm-hmm. does that mean? Yeah. He can't even say the names of his prior administration. He's got problems, and he talked about what they were doing. Uh, was needing to reelect themselves. Well, they're not in office right now. I, I think the guy's got problems. I, I, I don't want to wish anything bad on anybody, even a Democrat. But you know what? Uh, he's got some issues, I think. And usually when people start slurring words and, and make it, made major mistakes in their talk, you wonder if they might have had a little stroke or something went wrong. Uh, 
Dr. Lomero, let me ask you this question. Here we have, and I wasn't joking a few moments ago, I was telling the truth. We have a grumpy old communist, and he never really has done anything politically except get in the way. And Bernie Sanders is now being uh, possibly talked about as President of the United States by people like Jesse Jackson and others. On the other hand, you have a man that's a fumbler and absolutely has let senility creep in, and that's Joe Biden. You've already talked about this. But the Democratic Party... In order to survive, here we are only months away from the election. What would happen and how would they handle it to possibly throw a Michelle Obama or a Hillary back into the fray? Oh, it's actually quite simple. Because all of this, you remember the, the folks who pick the nominee in the in Democratic Party and Republican Party, too, go through a, a pretty standard process where you elect all these delegates. These delegates are representatives of the party faithful, so to speak. And and what will happen is whoever those delegates are will go to the convention, and on the first first ballot they're obligated uh, to vote for whoever their state picked. So let's say 40% of them vote for Joe Biden, 40% vote for Bernie Sanders. Uh, Neither of them have 50%. You need 50% plus one vote. So that means you've got back dealing going to go on, horse trading in the back rooms. And they're going to say, well, what do you give me if I give you 100 delegates from New York? What do you give me if I give you 50 delegates from Texas? And they go back and forth with some horse trading. And that's when the super delegates, of which there are quite a few of them around, they get to vote on the second ballot, too. They can vote for anybody. They're not obligated to vote for their state or for anybody in particular. They get to pick their favorite Democrat, so to speak. So what do you got on the second ballot? You've got all the first ballot people free to change their minds, free to do horse trading, uh, free to pick somebody a third party, anyone they want. And then you've got the superdelegates free. So at that point, my guess is that there are people in the back rooms right now talking about who they're going to replace Biden with. They don't want somebody there who's, who, you know, one commentator recently said we have a choice uh, on the Democratic Party between a socialist, and actually he's a socialist communist, as you say, or somebody with senility. Because let's face it, the guy keeps making the biggest blunders. He, he Down in South Carolina, he said, I am Joe Biden. I'm running for United States Senator from right. the state of South Carolina. And if you don't like me, he said, I want your support. If you don't like me, you can vote for the other Biden in the race. Well, who's the other Biden? There's only one Biden. <laughs> this guy's got problems. You know, and the Democrats are smart enough to know this guy's got problems, and they're going to want to replace him. But put the American public into the fray, Dr. Lomero. Let's assume that uh, at the convention it turns into, like you said, a great big horse trading mess, and they come up with the name Michelle Obama or Hillary Clinton. I mean, the American public, surely they can see through this smokescreen or this old western false front building, and that will not be an aid or a help to the Democratic Party at all. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are the Democratic Party has lost the presidential election. I, I think Trump's going to win by a large margin, uh, regardless of if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, Joe Biden gets the nomination, Michelle Obama gets it, or Hillary Clinton. Not one of those four can touch Donald Trump. And they're gonna, the Democrats are going to continue to do everything they can. They're going to promote the coronavirus. They're trying to start crises, worries, get people upset. Uh, and they're going to do everything they can because they know they're losing power and they can't control this election and they can't control Donald Trump. I don't think any of them are going to win. As far as the Democratic Party, I think I've told you in the past, I believe the Democratic Party is on its last months of existence because parties do not have to live forever. There's nothing in the Constitution about the Democratic Party. Parties come and go. The Whigs were very, very success, successful in the 1800s. They elected people president, the Whigs, and there's no Whigs today. And I think uh, in a year or so, there's not going to be any Democratic Party either. 
Let me ask you this question, and I'm sure others may have asked this question of you, but I know I've never brought it up before. But let's assume that Donald Trump does win re-election for another four-year period as president. What are your fears that the Democrats and those on the left might do to make a very unstable four more years? What are your fears for President Trump? I don't have any fears. Because I think the uh, House is going to be overwhelmingly taken back by the Republicans, and this time around, they're not going to be weak-kneed Republicans. Those people have retired or resigned, and, and the American people got rid of quite a few of them in the last election. No, I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a conservative House, a conservative Senate. The Senate will be more conservative. The House will be much better because it's going to be Republican-controlled, and they're going to have a lot of fun going after the Democrats for all the things they've been doing for the last four years or so. And I think I'm, I'm not worried about anything. I think our country is heading up and to the right, as they say in sales. You know, you want the sales to go up and to the right on those charts. And I think our country is going to do phenomenally well, because I think the American people are smart. They've been seeing what's going on. It's gradually, you know, it takes years for the House and the Senate and the White House to all line and get set up, because that's the way the founders made the Constitution and the country. They wanted us not to be able to flip on a dime because somebody like a Bernie Sanders might come along. They said we need to have things set up so that it moves slowly in the right direction, and that's what's happening. We're, we've been moving into a conservative era since I wrote that book, Great News for America, a few years ago. And we continue to move in a more conservative trend and more back to basics, back to the Constitution, back to rule of law. Look at what Trump has done with almost 200 new young conservative uh, pro-Constitution justices and judges he's put in around the country. He's changing the court system. Even the Ninth Circuit is turning conservative. They used to be considered the funny circuit uh, of, you know, of appeals. I'll tell you, I feel really good. I'm not fearful of anything in this country. We're a wonderful country. We're getting better. Donald Trump has helped, and the American people are in charge. Let me ask you about uh, the Democratic Party being led by Minority Leader Chuck Schumer with his really, I thought, outlandish comments last week of criticizing by name uh, some of the Supreme Court justices and almost wishing and aiding and abetting that ill will befall them. What were your thoughts about this? Had a GOP member or a conservative done the same thing, I think they would have tied him to a rail and floated him down the Potomac. What are your thoughts? I think it was totally inappropriate. I think he was uh, trying to get uh, somebody, some nutcase, give him permission to shoot somebody or harm one of these people. I think it was absolutely inappropriate. I think he should be censured. I think he should be removed for the Senate. And if the Senate doesn't remove him, I think the American people ought to never reelect this guy. They, if they have to have a Democrat, find somebody who's at least pro-American. And he certainly went way beyond his bounds and did something totally inappropriate. It's also a violation of the separation of powers. He went over to the Supreme Court when they were hearing a case and threatening them. That is absolutely the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's un-American, inappropriate, and he should be censured at the very least. Let me also ask, if I may, about the coronavirus. You touched on it a moment ago, Dr. Lomero, and I just want to state what I'm feeling in my own mind right now, my own heart, is that the elongation of the coronavirus and the media stoking fears and the left stoking fears and the Democrats pointing their fingers and almost basically blaming this administration for the coronavirus, is this another coincidental happening that people people are using to hopefully get rid of Donald Trump, in your opinion? Well, I don't necessarily know that they started it on purpose. They might have been stupid enough in China to do that on purpose uh, and that. But I do think one of the tenets of the Democratic Party playbook has been, ah, don't, right, don't let any crisis <laughs> go by that you don't try to exploit. And I think... Uh, whether or not the Chinese did this on purpose, because some people think it was a biological attack on the world, <laughs> but it also backfired on them, too. 
Uh, but I really think that they're, they're trying to use it, and I think the people in the markets are trying to use it to hurt Donald Trump. You know, he's got a beautiful economy, so try to stoke this into some big crisis. We had the stock market drop again this morning. Uh, we have an oil war. Uh, why should anybody in the U.S. feel bad if the prices of oil are going down? That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And, and we don't even have to worry in the United States because we are now oil independent thanks to Donald Trump. We are energy independent country. We don't need the Middle East. We don't need their oil. We've got plenty of our own. So I think they're trying to use it against Trump. And you know what? I think it's going to be like Ukraine, about Russia, all the other things they try to come up with. I think it's going to fall flat on their face. I mean, do you know in the last 12 months we've had estimates up to, depending on which estimates you use, 70,000 people died of the regular plain old flu. You know, the, the flu you get every year, some people get, unfortunately. We get about 40,000 to 70,000 Americans die every year of the flu. So far, we've had 22 die from this flu. Big deal. That's not even close to a regular flu. That's right. So why is everybody running out and buying toilet paper at Costco around the country? That's silly. It's, it's a media-stoked panic attack. Amen. And most Americans don't need to be panicked. They probably got enough toilet paper at home the last week, and and it's not going to suddenly run out. This isn't Venezuela. I think this is utterly ridiculous. Absolutely. We have a caller with a comment or a question. Go ahead, caller. Quickly, you're on the air. I'm down to four minutes left. Thank you. Well, I just was at Walmart here in my hometown, and I asked the stalker guy, what happened? He says they're all buying it up because of the coronavirus. And then I listened to the news at the top of the hour, which is CBS is the carrier of this station, and, and the hype. And then, you know, whether or not it's the markets reacting to the coronavirus or the markets are reacting to the fact that the people are in fear over nothing but don't seem to know better. Corona beer sales, Corona beer, which has nothing to do with coronavirus. Corona beer sales are off in a, you know, in unbelievably. And the Corona beer has nothing to do with the coronavirus. I feel sorry for the people of America who don't seem to know much of anything. I'll hang up. You know, uh, Dr. Lomero, before you respond to the caller quickly, it, it just kind of shows the incompetence and the lack of education, underline the word education, of the American public being gullible enough, not all Americans, but many Americans, being gullible enough to accept some of this garbage. Unfortunately, that's true. I mean, by now, with all the fake news stories we've had over the last four years, People should start realizing, and I think most Americans do, to be honest. Some don't. But people have to realize this media is essentially ideologically driven. They are pushing for socialism in the world. They're pushing for socialism in America. And they want to do things that will help their side win. And if they can get the country into a panic attack, you know, hurt the economy, maybe they might have a chance of beating Donald Trump. That's what they're hoping. That's what I believe. And and I really think most Americans have to stop listening to you. Remember the, what was it, the swine, uh, swine flu a mm-hmm. few years ago? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you call it? There weren't that many people that died from that. You know, that was a big fear, and Ebola was another fear, and this year it's Corona. You know what? It may wind up that almost nobody gets it and nobody dies from it. So big deal. And then you're going to have all this toilet paper in your house. People need to realize you shouldn't panic over every news story. Absolutely. Quickly, in the time remaining, the book is excellent. I've read it from cover to cover. I've dog-eared it. I've got it highlighted. Real World Socialism, Spiritual, Moral, and Economic Bankruptcy Sold by Using False Hopes and Deceit, written by Dr. Gerard Lom- I messed my tongue up and bit it. Gerard Lomero, thank you very much. Uh, where can they get the book? Quickly tell us. Uh, the easiest probably is just go to Amazon. And uh, it's right there, along with my other five books, and they can get a Kindle or print. And as I said, give it to your college student, because they need it to fight those Marxist and socialist professors. This man is a friend of this program, and will be back, I hope, on a frequent basis, because I absolutely enjoy talking to him. Dr. Gerard Lomero, my friend, thank you for being on the program. God bless you, sir. 
God bless you and all your wonderful listeners. Thank you, sir. Uh, the book is excellent. Uh, like I said, I've read it a couple of times, and I've highlighted it, and you're going to find it's laid out in very simple terminology, but very honest terminology. It's called Real World Socialism, written by Dr. Gerard Lomero. Uh, real quick, I want to remind you about our friends right there in Burley. Oh, my goodness, Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley. Hello, Curtis and Lorena. How are you? They've got things in that store that there's no way I could describe what they are. I mean, boy, if you're an electronics guru, you better get in there and find out all the items that they're serving you with. Absolutely all your electronics needs, whether it's home theater systems or video surveillance cameras, car stereos and speakers, complete sound systems, all the TVs, everything. I mean, they've got it all for you, and they know all these products by heart let me tell you curtis and lorena and the staff at patterson's electronics 421 east main and burley they're open monday through saturday nine to six number to call six seven eight six nine nine seven right now we'll send it over to wheels and be back in just a few minutes with the idaho legislative update and now back to zeb at the ranch on am 1230 kbar to reach zeb call 436-2244 or toll-free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb. Oh, there is a huge sale going on right now. Huge sale. I mean, it's really a big sale at Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland in Burley. You better stop in and see Jeff and the crew today. They're getting shipments in daily of new recliners, sofas, love seats, dining room sets. Oh, they've got all your flooring, all your carpet, and for the sleep center, they've got all your mattresses. They've got it all, and it's a huge, huge sale going on right Right now at Lee's Furniture Floors and More, 459 Overland in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Everything is on sale. Lee's Furniture Floors and More. Right now it's time for a very favorite segment on this program, the Idaho Legislative Update, while our legislature is in session up in Boise, and it's brought to you by Handy Truck Lines at 400 West, 100 South of Paul. They've been in business since 1928, serving all of Idaho and the surrounding states with the very best of transportation sources for you to get the goods. Absolutely. Handy Truck Lines, 400... West 100 South of Paul, bringing you the legislative update. And our friend on the air with us this morning, Representative Fred Wood. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good, Seb. How are you today? I am really good, and you have no idea how much I've anticipated having you on the program this morning. I know there's a couple of issues that you really want to get into, and I, I don't want to take any time away from you. So, Fred, I'll let you pick the first of the subjects and start carrying the ball. Go ahead. Thanks, Seb. Uh, well, as you and I talked, uh, I think there was two subjects that uh, are of interest today. Number one uh, is the coronavirus update, and Mm -hmm. number two is the salmon issue. Um, And uh, let's start off with the salmon issue. Last Thursday, well, first of all, um, about 10 days ago, the three lead agencies who are doing the Columbia River System Operations Draft EIS published that Draft EIS. And last Thursday... All three of those entities were in town uh, over in Nampa uh, to give uh, the governor's salmon work group an update on that draft EIS. And so we spent about eight hours going through the uh, uh, six different alternatives of the draft uh, EIS. The first alternative is a no-action alternative. The second uh, or the first uh, multiple objective alternative is basically a little change in spill. The second one, uh, MO2 as it's called, is principally a power uh, um, multiple objective or alternative increasing power production. The third is a transportation uh, or correction. The third is a dam breaching. Uh, alternative. The fourth is basically a transportation uh, alternative. And the then there's the preferred alternative. 
And the preferred alternative is basically the alternative to uh, increase the uh, flex bill and continue the program that was started about a year and a half ago. Um, everyone needs to understand that those uh, alternatives and the EIS was put out based upon all of the federal mandates that the Columbia River system is supposed to fulfill, mm -hmm. including power production for BPA, including transportation um, for the ports up and down the river to and including Lewiston. Um, and then uh, each one of them is also supposed to try to help the fish to whatever extent that option allows. Um, I think that they made the right decision with the preferred alternative, which is to continue um, to try to put some improvements uh, on the dams, to try to put some improvements on uh, the capability of spilling, to continue transportation with respect to barging. Um, but uh, the, the preferred alternative is not to uh, breach the dams. And they did a fairly careful analysis as to why that uh, would not be a preferred alternative. Uh, and I think they were pretty much uh, spot on with that. So that is the update on salmon. And people, if, if someone uh, uh, has a question or two, I'll be happy to try and answer that, Zeb. Well, let me, uh, let me jump in and can get into uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, update if you want. Well, I do, but I want to say this before we leave this subject on the dam breaching, and I really want to be very poignant and direct when I say this. I really find it hard to believe that the public that lives here in the Northwest, especially in our state of Idaho and around the surrounding area, could be duped into thinking it would be wise to breach the dams. It would be economic disaster. It would kill agriculture as we know it, and I just don't think the word is being put out strong enough as to why breaching is a very insane idea. That's my opinion. Well, with respect to agriculture and transportation and power production, uh, and particularly power production, actually, um, removing those dams would, uh, would decimate transportation. Um, you're going to have to really it's going to cost a lot of money to actually replace the power production. Um, and um, not to mention what it would do for the first number of years. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, the presentation, the first seven years, um, it, would, it would just decimate the uh, resident fish populations, et cetera, right. while all the silt is washed out of the system, uh, et cetera. So that's why it turned out not to be the preferred alternative. Now, with respect to if, if the only thing on your mind, Zeb, is fish, then that's one thing. But, you know, all the rest of the world understands that, yes, you have to have agriculture in its economy. You have to have transportation of the river and what economy that that provides. You have to have power production and, and the economy that that provides, et cetera. And the cost or the alternative cost of trying to prefer, uh, provide that without having the river system to be able to provide that um, is enormous. Absolutely. And so from any other sense, uh, other than just an absolute pure salmon fish sense, it makes no sense whatsoever. Absolutely. Now, you know, I'm a bass fisherman, Zeb, okay? I mean, I, I really enjoy bass fishing. Um, I never met a dam or a reservoir I didn't just love uh, because the more dams and the more reservoirs there are, the better the bass fishing. Mm -hmm. So if you understand what I mean. Yep. And I, I get the, what the folks are saying about the salmon, et cetera. I'm, no one wants to do away with the salmon or anything else. But the cost to the economy, Zeb, and the cost to, to everybody involved is going to be enormous if that ever happens. Yep. Absolutely agree. We have a caller with a question. Quickly, caller, you're on the air. Please go ahead. Well, the truth about the salmon, the orcas, 
that live up along the British Columbia coast or up the Canadian coast in Alaska are different than the ones they're trying to save. The ones that that live up along those other coasts eat eat uh, Chinook salmon that are 25 inches or longer, and they eat them by, uh, you can't even imagine how much they eat. And then they don't tell about how the orcas they're talking about down here are on the Salish Sea that they were taken out in the 60s by reasons other than anything that has to do with us. And so they're worried about the salmon. And then the hatchery production had been cut back. And in order for it to catch up, they, it's going to take years to get them. Because, again, they need to be 25 inches or longer. That's what these orcas want to eat. And they don't even bring that up. <laughs> and, 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 and they talk about saving the orcas. There's such misinformation. I don't know what happens in these committees. I wish I was there. I would probably never be able to shut up. So I would better not go, but... I'd like to hope that they're getting the truth out. I'll hang up. Uh, respond quickly to the caller, Fred, so we can get back into the coronavirus. Go ahead, please. There, well, the caller is correct. Uh, with respect to the orcas, there's a southern resident uh, population, which basically is in the Salish Sea. It does go through the Straits of uh, Juan de Fuca and out into the uh, coast uh, as far down as the mouth of the uh, Columbia. They actually feed primarily on um, Chinook salmon, um, and principally Chinook salmon from the Fraser River. Well, because of the ocean conditions, uh, the population of Chinook salmon in the Fraser River is in the toilet, just like it is everywhere else, uh, because it's principally the ocean that is causing the main problem today, uh, and has been for the past several years. The the uh, transient population of orcas which uh, go migrate all up and down the coastline their principal food source 95 percent is pinnipeds which are seals and sea lions etc they don't uh, feed much on the salmon but the uh, southern resident population um, which feeds principally on the salmon Basically, the Columbia River salmon don't help that that much. That's uh, that's mainly Fraser River salmon and areas a little north of that. So the caller is correct, um, and and I tell you, doing anything for uh, uh, that population of uh, whales. Not that I wish them any ill will or anything. No, I don't at all. But but if you think you're going to uh, change anything on the Columbia River systems operations to help them, um, I, you're sadly misguided. Absolutely. Fred, you're a doctor. Simply put, you know more about what's going on with the coronavirus than most of us. Let me just make this statement and then you pick up on it. I think that uh, the coronavirus has been blown completely out of control by a left-wing media and panic and fear that has been stoked by various people in the news media. I think that when we start looking at flu season that kills literally thousands of upon thousands of people every year we are absolutely off the rails in the concern that's being shown for the coronavirus and i think absolutely we need to use common sense it's a serious problem but not a panic problem would you agree with me or not no Zeb, i do agree with you and let me this is what i would i would recommend um and and then talk a little bit about the coronavirus um, the issue, the coronavirus um, does not appear to have the contagion potential that um, influenza does. It's contagious, but not, at least at this point in time, not to that extent. It's a little bit more like SARS and MERS was, which are previous coronaviruses. Here's the danger of the coronavirus. In a regular bad flu season, the mortality rate is 0.1%. Uh, the Spanish flu in 1918 apparently had a mortality rate of about 1%. The coronavirus, the World Health Organization a couple of days ago pegged the uh, mortality rate at 3.8%, or correction, 3.4%. As near as I can determine from the reported results of both Idaho and Italy, 
and I think Italy has pretty good uh, statistics at this point in time, the mortality rate is about 5%. So somewhere between 1 in 20 and 1 in 25 people who get the coronavirus are going to die versus 1 in 1,000 of influenza. Uh, at least early on, that's the estimate. Now, the good thing is, is that the contagion is significantly less. So it, fear and panic is ne- not where we want to go, Zeb, at all. That is the worst thing that we can do. Common sense must prevail. So, you know, the biggest thing that you want to do initially is to, if economically you don't need to go there, if you don't have to go there for work and you don't have to go there for whatever, don't go there. Stay at home, you know, or in your local community. Um, don't tra- don't travel to social gatherings that you don't need to go to. That's the number one thing, particularly if the coronavirus should somehow get into southern Idaho. Uh, number two, um, you know, it's common, particularly around the capital here, and, and politicians do this all the time, you know, you shake everybody's hand. Well, you know, you got to quit shaking everybody's hand. You don't shake hands anymore until this blows over. Um, secondly, or next, is really good hygiene. You want to make sure you wash your hands multiple times a day. You want to make sure you have alcohol-based cleansers, which do kill uh, coronaviruses of all types, and there's no indication that they will not kill this particular virus. They seem to work against this particular virus. uh, Next is stay in touch with the local health district. They have the latest updates. They have the best um, information and the best procedures to use to try to prevent any contagion from spreading if anything does get into the community. If you don't have to go to Salt Lake, if you don't have to go to wherever, where there's known viral cases, don't go, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. Stay home. Those are the kinds of just basic common sense things, Zeb, that we really need to do. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Fred, right there. Let me inject this question. I have heard through various doctors and various reports that the elderly, those 75 to 80 years old, are the most susceptible that have, quote-unquote, underlying conditions, heart problems, uh, emphysema, that type of thing. Is that true? That is true. Every year you get older, every older, uh, well, okay, Every year that you grow older, Zeb, let's put it that way, um, your immune system just generally works a little less. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the older you get, the more susceptible you are to anything. And this coronavirus is no different at all. Secondly, even people who are fairly young with comorbidities or particularly uh, long-term illnesses such as diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, etc., are at significantly more risk. Risk. So if you look at some of the people who uh, have died in the United States, the first was a 54-year-old male that had underlying long-term illness. Now, I don't know what that was, but had an underlying long-term illness. So if you've got anything like that, and then the older you are, when you get to be an old guy like me, you don't want to be traveling to places where there's known uh, coronavirus, uh, et cetera. Um, you know, just use some common sense and, and stay away from uh, people if you can. Well, Fred, what are, in simplified form in the time remaining, what are some of the symptoms that one can perhaps notice that might be coronavirus as compared to a common cold or the flu? Um. Well, this is a respiratory illness, so you're going to wind up with respiratory symptoms. Um, Not so much of a runny nose. Uh, Basically, the first thing is going to be a little sore throat and a cough. Um, And again, the common sense with this too, Zeb, and, and let's go over this because I think this is important. If you 
particularly if you have traveled anywhere or if you're developing respiratory symptoms of any kind, then the first, the last thing on earth you want to do is go to the emergency department. Right. The next last thing you want to do is to wander into your doctor's office with no warning. Because if, in fact, you're positive, then what you're going to do is contaminate the health care system that has to take care of everybody else. Right. So if you first get symptoms, the first thing to do is to call your provider on the phone and make arrangements to be checked and tested either at the end of the day or the beginning of the day when you're not going to have other patients there. Or stay in your home, contact the public health district, and the public health district will come and uh, check you and test you, etc. So again, be very, very cautious about, and, and there's no other polite way of saying it other than contaminating the health care system that has to take care of everybody else and all other illnesses. So use some common sense about that. But it's principally a respiratory disease. Approximately 80% of the people who get corona, this uh, COVID-19, this particular coronavirus, are developing a pneumonia. Only 5% will become severely ill. Or, well, I think it's about 15% become severely ill. But the, the mortality rate is uh, around 4 to 5%. One quick question regarding that, and I've only got a minute left, is there are reports that there's a lot of people that may have the virus, and they show no symptoms, and they don't know they're sick. That's a problem. I'm not sure that's true. Okay. Okay, that, that, those first reports came out of China, but that's not necessarily been the case in the United States. Uh, we don't know that yet. I, I think at this point in time, you can't make that statement. We've not tested enough people to know that there's cases with really mild symptoms or no symptoms. So, so I, the, the more I'm hearing, the more that that may, may not be true. Okay, caller that's on the air, I'm going to give you exactly 15 seconds. I'm down to the last couple of minutes. Real fast, go. Well, another problem we've got is we've got spring break coming up, and all those college kids and uh, high school kids that are headed off for spring break, um, that's a problem. I'll let you address that. Uh, very good question. Uh, go ahead, Fred, real quick, please. Well, Mom and Dad need to take away the car, the car keys, the credit card, the money, um, and have them come home from college and visit with the family for about uh, a week and then send them back to college. Amen. Uh, let's do spring break in Burley. Amen. You know, Fred, every time I have you on the air, you're very informative and really lay it out in simplistic form for everybody to understand. Representative Fred Wood up at our Idaho Legislative Update. God bless you, man. Thank you. I'm out of time, but I certainly appreciate you coming on the program. Zeb, thank you so much, and God bless all of the listeners. Talk thank you. you. Thank you, Representative Bye -bye. Fred Wood and Dr. Wood also. He understands what's going on and really gave us some good information. This legislative update brought to you by Handy Truck Lines, 400 West, 100 South of Paul. They've been serving all of the Northwest since 1928 with the very best in transportation of your goods and services. They deliver. Thank you very much, Handy Truck Lines. Holy cow, it's time for the weather real quick brought to you by Scarrow's Meats 331 North Road Jerome the number to call 324-7657 or go to their website scarrowsmeats.com oh my goodness all the delicious meats for all different occasions whether it's the pork ribs the tri-tips all the different bacons the sausages the bratwurst whatever it's all really really good from Scarrow's Meats and right now here's Gina with the weather it's going to feel a little bit more like winter today. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Slight chance of rain and or snow showers off and on throughout the day. Plus, it is going to be windy. Gusts as high as 22 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy skies. We are expecting a high of 51. Tonight, that's going to continue, but tapering off after midnight. Mostly cloudy skies. Low of 31. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Winds are going to be calming down. High of 53. Overnight, low of 28. By Wednesday, sunny and 58. That's going to be our warmest day of the week. Thursday, sunny, 54. And then by Friday, sunny, 57. 
That's look at your weather forecast for Zeb at the ranch. Thank you very much, and don't forget Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats. Mmm, mmm, delicious meats from Scarrow's Meats at 331 North Road, Jerome. Again, that telephone number, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time at Scarrow's Meats. Real quick, our thank yous go out to our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with all the tires you need for your cars, pickups, SUVs, you name it, they've got all the tires. And uh, I urge you to stop into any one of the seven locations today. And by the way, too, farmers, don't forget, out there on the dairy, the farm, they're always there with those big service trucks to serve you for fixing the tires on your backhoes, your skid steers, your loaders, everything. Don't forget, their main word is service at any and all the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Sales. And of course, they're having their big spring tire sale going on right now. Now's the time. Along with that, don't forget the brakes, uh, best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this and so much more with our friends over at these locations, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Got to run the way things were, the way things ought to be, and the four words that we pay attention to the most in God we trust. See you tomorrow morning at 8.06.